Hey, what's going on, guys? Time for a story. It's story time, story time, story time with Jeff. Should be the new uh, intro to these videos. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so either. That was pretty bad. Enjoying some uh, espresso. Um, and uh, it's a cold, rainy day today. Figure I come outside and uh, tell you guys a story. Um, they're going to be about when I worked at the old person's home. Now, that's what I call it. I call it the old person's home. Uh, technically, it's just an assisted living facility. And if you haven't seen or heard my uh, older videos, um, story times about this place, I'll give you a quick uh, refresher course. Basically, it's what it was. It was an assisted living home. But uh, unfortunately, because of the situation over there financially, basically there was a, a hospital that funded this assisted living home. And uh, they really couldn't find it in the budget to keep the place going. So what happened was, by the time I got there to work there, they had less people that were actually functional. What I mean by that is that it wasn't a hospital. It was supposed to be older people who needed a little bit of help. Assistance. That's all it was. Like, hey, I can get up and wash myself and brush my teeth and I can go you know, sit in the other room and eat a meal, watch TV, and all I need you to do is maybe put my shoes on every now and again, maybe make my bed for me, stuff like that. Little things. But with time, they really needed money, which was not a good thing at all. And what happened was the administration started to accept people that really needed more than what we were qualified to do for them. Okay, They really needed to be in a hospital. These were people who, in some cases, were bedridden. They had medical problems that we could not help them with. Um, men and women who were in their, like, seriously, late 80s, early 90s, and they needed to be wiped. You know what I mean? They would throw up on themselves and, and not be able to clean it. That's not, you know, that's not assisted living, okay? I gave people showers and, and baths. That's not what you're supposed to do in an assisted living home. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be light-duty stuff. Basically, you're like a butler. You know what I mean? And uh, because of the money situation, they kept letting people in who needed more and more help that, like I said, we were not qualified to do. Should not have been there doing that for them. But, uh, you know, I didn't know that. When I first got the job there, I was told that I was going to be a personal care assistant, a PCA, and uh, I wasn't qualified to uh, uh, distribute any kind of drugs or pills or anything like that. While I was there, I did that um, completely illegally uh, because I wasn't qualified to do that. Was, you know, it's a very, very uh, important thing when you're, especially when you're dealing with people's medicine. You have to be qualified. You could very easily give someone too much of something and they can die. So it's no joke, and because of things like that, this place was a little bit upside down. The people that worked there, for the most part, were very good people. It's just, uh, it, it wasn't run how it was supposed to be run. So anyway, that's kind of the backstory there. So <laughs> the story I want to tell you is actually a little bit funnier. It's not so macabre, um, you know, or dark. I do have a lot of sad stories. I'm not really in the mood to tell you one of those right now. That's, I, I'm an emotional person. You know, in general, I just, I, I get very emotional over things, especially things that I probably shouldn't, you know, have too much uh, emotions towards. But um, talking about people who died there, who I befriended, talking about people with serious problems, there's there's a lot of sadness that happened there. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't a fun thing. I, I went, I worked, I got, you know, um, I got to meet a lot of really nice people and I got to meet some just messed up old people. There was one woman there, and I don't know if I told this story or not, but she was demonic. She had Satan in her. I mean, some of the stuff that happened, and I, I really don't remember if I touched upon this or not. You can let me know in the comments, but I have some stories about her that scared the shit out of me. Really scared. Oh, by the way, it might be a little profanity in this video. Sorry for not giving you a profanity heads up, but now you got one. Uh, if you got little kids, you know, don't want to hear a couple, a couple curse words or cuss words, depending on where you live. Um... You know, there, there's not going to be too much in this video, but just might be one or two. So, um, actually, the story I'm telling you, there's definitely one. Dropping an F bomb. Can't wait. You excited? I'm excited. <laughs> so, anyway, um, what was I talking about? I got distracted there. Uh, yeah, the woman who was, who had a demon in her. I mean, I'm talking about some serious, she needed a real exorcist, uh, exorcism, rather. Very, very scary stuff. In fact, uh, I had an experience with her, and it was literally the scariest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. I, I was very, very fearful. Uh, very shaken. I was literally shaking. I was so scared. 
So if I didn't tell those stories, please let me know in the comments. I'll certainly tell those in the future. But uh, I do a lot of story time videos. And I don't remember what I told you. So you guys got to help me out and remind me so I don't repeat myself, which I tend to do a lot anyway. So the woman we're going to be talking about today, I, I don't like using real names just in case family or people I worked with in the past know who I'm talking about. I don't want to use their actual name. So let's call this woman um, Liz. How about that? Liz. Obviously not her real name, but for the sake of the story. So Liz was uh, one of the uh, people who lived there. And now she was one of the women that were with it. Totally, like mentally, completely with it. She just had some physical problems. So she was in this home because of her physical problems. I, I want to say she had phlebitis. I don't know if that's the correct term, but she had water, you know, that would, uh, water weight, like in her legs, it would build up. So her legs were like just massive. I mean like tree trunks, okay? And this was a very, very large woman to begin with. Not necessarily like fat. She wasn't like a big fat woman, but she was, she was tall. She was very stocky. If I had to give a bet, the best description I can give is, uh, what's the actor's name? He, he played the judge in My Cousin Vinny. Um, Herman Munster, you know? Uh, damn, I don't know that guy's name off the top of my head. She was like a female version of that. Big head, big, you know, linebacker shoulders. She was probably 6'4". This was a big grandmother, okay? Probably the largest grandmother I've ever seen in my life. Very, very sweet woman. Wonderful, sweet woman. Uh, had great conversations because she, mentally she was all there. You could talk to her for hours. She had lots of stuff to say, and she was always very positive. Very positive person, which was great. Very cool. Uh, but again, her, her disability and the reason why she was there was the, the phlebitis in her legs, that the water retention is what it was. And I, I hope I'm saying that right, phlebitis. I think that's what that is called. Um, my grandfather had that, so I should know what it's called. That's why I'm saying it's phlebitis, but... Anyway, of course, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. So, yeah, she had a hard time, hard time getting around. I mean, each one of her legs probably weighed 100 pounds. No joke. I mean, like, like this. So uh, when she was sitting, she had to put her legs up all the time because she had to worry about circulation and stuff. And, you know, I, I just always felt so bad. They had a, um, one of the things that we did for her was wrap her legs. So we had these tight, you know, kind of spandex type bandages. And we'd have to really crank down on that to, to, put a lot of pressure against her legs so that it wouldn't just fill up with all this fluid. So, um, yeah, I always felt really bad because she was in pain. She did take painkillers, you know, which sometimes got her looped up if her, her dose was a little high or if she didn't eat much that day. Uh, sometimes she would get a little wacky and you'd be able to tell, you know, because like I said, she was all there mentally. Half the people that were there were there because they couldn't cope with life on a mental level and the other half because of a physical uh, ailment. But, um, yeah, sometimes she, she started talking funny. You knew it's because, you know, she wasn't losing it. She just didn't eat enough or her medication was too high that day or whatever. Because, like I said, this place was uh, semi, semi-pro. semi Not really a 100% professional environment. People there, some of them were trained. There were some, um, you, you know, were registered nurses there and stuff. But, you know, it, it is what it is. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> the story I'm going to tell you is about... Liz's obsession with puzzles. Now we had a, a, a rec room, okay? It's kind of in the middle of the building. There was one wing this way, one wing that way, and, and a center place where the, you know, the dining room, kitchen area was, and then there was a, a rec room. Now in the rec room, we would have activities like bingo, as you would imagine. And I love playing bingo, that was great. Because I used to always make jokes and stuff, you know, when B4 came out, I would say like, you know, when your birthday was B4, dinosaurs existed. People thought that was funny. I know it was super corny, but remember, you're dealing with a lot of senior citizens here. Can't be throwing Instagram and Facebook jokes at them. So uh, I kept it simple. People really liked it. <laughs> and uh, that was always fun. So obviously, a lot of seniors love bingo. Uh, they had a lot of fun. And what we did there was, instead of money, because obviously you can't gamble, we'd have a bunch of snacks. So, you know, people like like the, the nurses and, and the, um, you know, care assistants like myself, and there was a couple girls there. And I have other stories about... There's one particular girl I'm going to talk about in the future. I have a kind of an awkward, very personal, funny story about that. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But um, they were they were really nice people, and they would bring in uh, candy all the time. There's bags of uh, gummy bears, stuff like that. And we'd use that as prizes. And sometimes it would be makeup, too. You know, because obviously the old women, they love to get dressed up and put a lot of makeup on and stuff. Occasionally, we'll go to the dollar store and, and get, like, uh, you know, cheap wallets or whatever for the men. So essentially when you played bingo or, or other activities where you, there'd be prizes, 
you'd, you'd have like 15 or 20 prizes lined up. And if the person won that particular game, you know, or they yelled at, they got bingo, okay, cool, you, go, you get to go and pick something off the table. They made it fun for them. You know, a little sweet treat for later, and you know, or a little toy, you know, adult toy, I guess, senior toy. Um, but they appreciate that kind of stuff. And it was something they looked forward to. And that's kind of the point of the rec room was to keep them mentally going. You know what I mean? Because you can't just sit and just rot away. You have to be active. I, I, anyone can tell you that. Not just senior homes, but when you... A lot of people are very, you know, work-minded, and they just their whole life. They go to work, they come home, they go to work, and that's their life. And when you don't have work anymore, when you retire, some people just wither away. They don't know what to do with themselves. They need structure. So to get up and, okay, breakfast is at this time, and lunch is at this time, and, you know, uh, the rec room is going to be open from this time, it gives them uh, stability. And a lot of seniors grew up in, a, in an era, a time period, where you had stability in your life. It's not like today where, you know, people just get up when they want, you know, and don't have anything to do that day or, or most days for some people. Every day for, for people out there that I know of. Uh, but, you know, they needed that structure, so it's, it's something they look forward to. Bingo was one of those things. We had um, memory ball, where it was like a, or story ball, I forget what we called it. It was an inflatable ball and they had subjects on it. And you'd throw it. You'd sit in a circle and you'd throw the inflatable wall and someone would catch it. And they'd have to tell, you know, whatever subject that was facing them, they'd have to tell a story. You know, they're, they're all old, so they all have lots of stories, you know. And that was fun, too. That brought back a lot of memories. And we used to have a book. Actually, not a book. A, um, it was a monthly publication. I think it was called Nostalgia. Nostalgia Magazine, something like that. And it would just have throwback stuff. It would show, hey... Remember when you cooked on this type of pan? Remember when these chairs existed? Crap like that. And it was cool for me because I didn't know any of that stuff. It was all basically stuff you'd see in, you know, antique shops, you know. But these people grew up, you know, using that. Or their mothers or, or, or fathers had that kind of stuff. So I actually really enjoyed a lot of the rec, rec uh, activities that we did together. And to be honest, when I worked there, I was the only new person. Everyone who was there was already there for a while. So they kind of got bored of doing that kind of stuff. And for me, it was fresh and new. And I really, I got a kick out of making people laugh. I, I, I really enjoyed bringing some kind of joy to these people's lives. Because again, you're, you're living in this home. It's, it's very mundane. A lot of people just, uh, and most seniors don't want to be there. Their kids put them there, you know, because uh, they, they don't know what to do with them or they, they can't afford, you know, to keep their house going, whatever. A lot of times what happens is, you know, a couple grows old together. They have kids, grandkids, you know, maybe the wife passes away and the guy doesn't, can't afford the house, you know. What was that? Damn squirrels are throwing shit at me. I'll tell you, now, now that it's fall, I heard this yesterday too, that they were throwing them at the car. You know how much I love squirrels. The, uh, <laughs> they're, they're going around the trees, obviously, I live in the woods, you can say, let me, let me take off here for a second and show you this. I can figure out my tripod I've been using for 50 years. Oh, earthquake! What the hell? Okay, all right, there we go. So you can see, you know, in the woods, all these trees, and the damn squirrels. Oh, there he is. Let's zoom in. Oh, got to turn the viewfinder around. Yeah, I don't know where he went now. Damn it! Anyway, they're all getting ready for winter, and they're uh. You know, grabbing their acorns and nuts and what have you from the tree and whatever they don't like, they just drop down. They throw it at me. I'm telling you. I'm not kidding. They throw it when I'm walking outside. I get hit in the head with shit. They throw it at my cars. Not good. Anyway, got totally distracted there. So, back on track. So yeah, rec room. Awesome. A lot of fun. People look forward to it. So let's get back to Liz. All right. Liz is the, the big lady, the biggest person there, bigger than any of our staff. Okay. Oh, oh I know what I was going to say. I was going to say that most of the staff there, they didn't, they didn't find it exciting to go do the rec stuff because they've been doing it for years. You know what I mean? So for me, it was fun and exciting and new. So four out of five times when they had a rec, tech, rec activity, they would have me do it. Okay. And I was totally stoked and excited to do it for them. So that was cool. It worked out great. Um, sorry, back to Liz. In the rec room, they had, of course, a bunch of different board games and there was one old dude that used to love playing chess and no one wanted to play chess with him, so I always played chess with him. He used to kick my ass. He was really good. And I'm not I'm not a bad chess player, I don't think, but I don't have a lot of like experience with a bunch of people. The people I usually play, you know, I win a lot of the time, not to uh, to gloat or anything, but I'm not playing people who really play chess often, so maybe I think I'm okay, but I really suck. That's probably the case, but anyway. Um, so this guy loved playing chess. He, he never said a word. He, and he was into it. When he was playing chess, he was just... 
I'd be like, oh, so you enjoy breakfast? Oh, shh. Always shush me too, because I was trying to like, you know, bring up conversation. And but anyway, so the, I played uh, chess with him, and um, there was two two women who love playing uh, shoots and ladders, and you know, a couple board games. There was a little mini library. Obviously, people like to sit and read and just be quiet. Um, but there was a table when you first walked into the rec room. It was on the left hand side, and this table had a community puzzle. All right, so there there were usually like a thousand piece puzzle, and it had actual puzzle mat. So it was like kind of like a felt board. And you had a spot for all the extra pieces, and then right in the middle is where you formed your puzzle. Now, Liz was obsessed with the puzzles. Loved doing puzzles. That's the only thing she really looked forward to, okay? She liked playing bingo, and that's cool and everything, because you win little prizes, you know? Um, but she didn't play any of the board games. She didn't like to read. She just liked to do the puzzles. And usually they were pretty difficult puzzles. You know, it was a pretty busy picture and a thousand pieces. I don't know if anyone watching this does puzzles, but... Uh, if you don't normally do puzzles, a thousand piece puzzle on a, on a really busy picture, it's difficult. It takes time. And that's the whole idea is it killed time. She didn't like being there. I, I guess her kids made her go there because they didn't know where to put her. And that kind of sucks, you know. Um, whatever the situation was, they couldn't live with her. Whatever it was. So that, that's what she looked forward to. That was Liz's activity, was doing the puzzle. Now everyone there knew that. Now this was a community puzzle. So... People would come and they would kind of add to it a little bit. And she didn't mind all that much uh, if you added pieces. Like, let's say she had a chunk of like 10 or 15 pieces for the corner. You know, she'd get all the edge pieces together, whatever. And someone might come, you know, and sit there for 5 or 10 minutes when she wasn't there. And, uh, you know, go ahead and just kind of add to it. And that was cool. They were helping. Well, one day, we had this new woman come in. This uh, really nice uh, old Jewish woman. Uh, I can't remember her name. Her family was so, like... Um, I guess they had so much guilt because they kept visiting like five times a day. Every, oh, Ma, you okay? What do you need? Can I get you anything? If you really love her that much, bring her home. Don't let her sit in this place. <laughs> but anyway, so she came in. And, uh, you know, it's funny because when there was new people there, and there's only about five or six new people the entire span I worked there. So I worked there for a couple months. Uh, and I did all kinds of, you know, different shifts. Um, a lot of it was during the day, but I did do some overnight shifts and, and third shifts and stuff. But, um... The people who came in knew it took them a little while to get adjusted. And it's funny because, and I could tell you different stories in the future, but there were clicks. It, it was just like high school. Like when you when you sat for all your meals in the cafeteria area, cafeteria, it was really like 15 long tables set up. But there was like there was little groups. These four old guys like each other, so they always sat in this corner. And then these women were like the talkative women, you know, and then you know, if you you kind of want to keep yourself, it was this table, and that was the quiet women. It was just like high school. There was all these different old people cliques. And so this new Jewish woman came in, and she really wanted to fit in, and she wanted to be part of the, the, the popular girl staple, I suppose. That was the equivalent of it, the talkative you know, women that kind of took charge. And uh, that's where Liz was. She sat over there. And uh, they, didn't, they didn't want her there. They, she just didn't fit in because she was a, like a tattletale. Now, I don't have a personal opinion on it, but, but she was. She would, she would tattle on everyone when they did something wrong or she saw something, you know, she'd literally just point out, oh, so-and-so, she, she's got two jellos, you know, she shouldn't have two jellos. So these women didn't want her there, so she didn't really fit in all that well. So skip forward like a couple weeks of her being there. Eventually, you know, because there was a couple times where they're yelling at each other, we have to actually break up a verbal fight with these old ladies. All right, you talk about people that are well into their 80s and 90s. Uh, I think the oldest person that was there was 97 and still alive when I left, by the way. Uh, did not, you know, she was a healthy 97. Who knows how long she lived? You know, she could still be alive now. I have no idea. But anyway, um, so this Jewish woman, she, uh, she didn't quite fit in. And she used to piss off these other girls, including uh, Liz. Now, one day, <laughs> this cracks me up. One day, Liz gets up. And it's about maybe, I don't know, 10 or 11 in the morning. And they get up earlier now. So this is around lunchtime or so. And uh, after lunch, everyone disperses, and Liz goes to do her puzzle, and the Jewish woman comes over. And the Jewish woman says, oh, can I do the puzzle with you? And Liz is like, eh, she didn't want to be mean, but she basically said no. Like, I'm just going to do this in a little bit. You can come by, you know, and see if you want to add to it. And she was very specific about that, add to it. Because that's what, you know, people would do. They come over, They everyone kind of knew that that was her thing. It's the only thing she really, really got excited about. So people generally stayed away from it. It was usually empty. And if Liz wasn't there, someone else came there. They were there for like five minutes and left. No one really hung out there. Uh, most people weren't interested in doing puzzles except for Liz. 
So anyway, this one particular day, uh, after lunch, Liz gets up, goes to the bathroom, or goes to her room, whatever she did, I don't know. And then I see this Jewish woman sitting there. Now, I'm, I'm running a wreck activity. I think we were doing some kind of a, um, oh, man. It was out. I don't remember exactly. Something physical outside. Passing a ball or, I don't know, lawn bowling with plastic balls. I, I forget what it was. But we were doing outside activity. And that was something that you didn't have to participate in. It was basically just a volunteer thing. Whoever wanted to go outside, get a little exercise on the lawn, roll the ball, whatever they were doing. Uh, can certainly join, but not everyone did that. When we had those outside activities, they weren't like, certain things were mandatory to do, like the reading thing was mandatory to keep everyone's brain going, you know, but a lot of the other activities weren't. So, like half the people did it, and the other half didn't want to do it. So anyway, so I see the, the old Jewish woman sitting at the puzzle table, and I see her, there's chunks of puzzles put together. I see her taking the pieces apart. So I'm thinking, Jesus... And I walked over and asked him, I'm like, oh, you know, you, need, you want some help or something? Maybe I can help you show you where these go. She's like, oh, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. She's very nice. I'm like, okay, <laughs> no big deal. So uh, we went outside, did the whole activity. Oh, oh the squirrel, damn squirrel. And uh, when we came inside, I saw Liz walk by, and I'm thinking in the back of my mind, and I'm doing other things too, I'm not just focused just on this, but I see her walk by and I'm thinking, man, you know, I wonder if she's like, you know, working on the puzzle with her, because I don't know if she really wanted those pieces taken apart. So I'm walking past where the bathroom is, the, the men's bathroom, and I hear, Mother fucker! <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, and she screamed it. Liz got to the table, saw that this woman took apart her puzzle that she's working on for probably two or three weeks already at this point. Because when, when she was all done, she'd put all these puzzles together, and then we'd shellac them or put the Elmer's glue on the back, whatever, to keep it together, and we'd, we'd put it in a frame and hang them. And she just yelled, motherfucker. <laughs> Everyone in the whole place just completely stopped what they did, and they're like, oh. they were like scared. Because remember, this is like a, you know, a huge woman, too. Like, she could probably take me, honestly. If I, I mean, she put up a fight. I would like to think that I can kick her ass, but um, wouldn't be easy. Wouldn't be easy if I, I mean, if she seriously went around and King Kong did and started throwing chairs and stuff, I might be hanging on her arm while she's manhandling me, you know? I don't know. She's a big lady. She was pissed. And now, at this point, I've been working there for probably two months, and I've never seen her angry about anything. She was always very neutral, very polite, uh, very nice. But when she, when she yelled that, I was like, oh my God. I immediately knew what it was because I saw her messing with the puzzle earlier in the day. And then uh, I, so I, I ran over the rec room, as did two different nurses that were there. And she got up and she threw the chair. She just like palmed the chair and threw it like halfway across the room and stormed out. And then, you know, she didn't run because of her legs, but she kind of like quickly, you know, shuffled back to her room. I'm thinking, oh my God. You know, at the time it was very serious. Thinking about it now, it, it's hilarious. You can always go back and think of, uh, you know, bad or negative moments and, and laugh at them because that's what you have to do. You know, you either laugh or cry in life, and sometimes you gotta laugh. But uh, I'll just, I'll never forget that. I know it's, I know it's a silly, maybe insignificant moment, you know, hearing this story for a lot of you guys, but uh, it was very out of her character. It was very surprising. And I mean, she, I've never seen her that pissed. And even after that, I've never seen her pissed at all after that. Now for uh, most of that day, or actually all that day, and most of the next day, she didn't come out of her room. She missed breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We would bring it to her room, you know, and she didn't say anything to anyone. Everyone knew what the deal was, okay? Now, after that, we started giving her puzzles to do in her room privately, and it only took about a week, and she got over the whole thing, and she actually apologized to, uh, she went to all the staff members and, and, you know, said, I'm so sorry for my, my outrage and stuff, but, like, I was actually a little concerned that I would have to try, like, I didn't know if she was going to start attacking the woman, you know, or go to a room and rip her doors off the hinges, which she probably could. It was scary. It was a, it was a little freaky. And, uh, you know, of course, at the time, we're all very on edge. And, and a couple weeks had passed or whatever, and even the, the staff members, we would joke around about that moment because it was just really out of place. It was not, not expected. Um, but but <laughs> you better believe after that, no one really went over and touched her puzzles anymore. Even though she, you know, apologized and, and she was very happy again, she made her point. She liked those puzzles. Don't screw with it. Don't don't come over and take my puzzle apart. So I happen to think that was pretty funny. So I wanted to share that story with you. All right, coffee break.
Ah, oh, damn, that's good. 